gnocchi was mushroom, potato gnocchi with uh, mushroom sauce. And on top it was the flat iron steak marinated with the garlic and rosemary. Uh, upside down apple tart with a lemon almond cream. You would expect beautiful food like that at a five-star restaurant in a city, but we're actually in the middle of a music festival right now, Lightning in a Bottle. Sometimes out in the real world or whatever you want to call it, there's an expectation of each connection. What are they trying to get from me? And here there's none of that. It's just like love and joy and moments of pure bliss and pure connection and the freedom that we felt in our spirit. Dream, when was Lightning in a Bottle started? It was started in 2004. The first year, you know, it was just couple speakers and some Christmas lights and you know 800 people coming together and now it's 20,000 people and I don't even know how many stages we have all together a lot it's like a permission slip for people to come and explore more of who they really are since you guys started LIB several years ago how much of a role do you think food has played here well Oh, wow, it's amazing that you're asking me that question because I, I think a huge role. There's the learning kitchen where you can come and learn how to make amazing smoothies and raw cacao and there's a lot of little things you can get into here. I used to just come to these festivals to party but after a while I found that it was just more fun to participate in a way. So that's how I kind of fell into doing this juicing because my friends were running it and it was like a perfect opportunity to just be involved and be part of something beyond a party environment. I go through a lot of music festivals working with these guys and one thing I've noticed is that the saying you are what you eat is especially true at a transformational festival like this. My workshop today is called The Nature of Food. If we pay more attention and invite mindfulness into our kitchen, then miracles can occur. Christina, can you tell us about the Learn Kitchen? What is it? Sure, it's a, it's a workshop area here in the festival, and it's basically a lot of healthy cooking, kitchen, environmental workshops. I, I think it's important to look at food in a deeper way in, in that how it relates to our entire lives, you know? The old adage, um, you are what you eat, there's so much truth in that. And I think that the bottom line of good health, good nature, good mood is, um, is based upon what you put into your body, you yeah. know? Have people always been interested in food at festivals? You know, I think it has changed. We've expanded the space this year because last year we were in a smaller area uh -huh. and people were pouring out of the area so it definitely is a testimony to people's interest in health and food and self-nourishment. Why do you think people seek that? Our generation was conditioned to eating convenience foods, a lot of fast food, frozen food and there are so many easy ways to eat out but I really think that it's important to learn how to take care of ourselves at home. Respect your food, respect yourself. You know, it's when we, when we pay attention to what we're putting into our bodies, we can stand strong. Do you feel like that's part of the whole festival culture, having food that's organic and conscious? Yeah. Yes. Because yeah. knowing that there's gonna be awesome food is a big part of the drive about it. Well, if you think about the arc of your day, it's like, revolves around food. I mean, it's so integral to the, the process, especially in a place like this. I feel like it used to be a little bit, there was a bigger gap. Like, there was all, there was a couple of choices that were organic at Giggle Juice, that were organic options. We kind of come for the food because we know it'll be good, but a lot of people don't 
come for the food, but then the food becomes like an education thing. Because yeah. they don't think you can have healthy tasting good food, you yeah. know? But then they try it and they'll be like, oh wow. Mm -hmm. And they go home and they're happy. Yeah, and it's like an introduction thing. It's a transformational festival and you're transforming every aspect of you, you know? And, and part of it's your spirit, part of it's, you know, what you put into your body and your food and um, the community that you're, that you're surrounding yourself by. So it's all part of it. It's an interesting evolution that's happened because during the Woodstock generation, people just went for the music and the drugs, but now it's like about so much more than that. I feel like yeah. it, it fits in in part, it's like a holistic thing. It's like each part is its own place, you know? There's like music and community and, uh, you know, food and drugs. <laughs> and like, I think it creates a complete whole. It's almost like the festivals now are kind of like mini experiments in like redoing society, right? I mean, food is a huge part of the experience, so, totally. so we're, we're evolving. I feel like we're in the golden age of festivals where it's so much more than music. It's about these other aspects of the experience where they're embracing the culinary side, where it's just this fully interactive uh, opportunity for people to grow and to learn. And I mean, what's not to love? You know, this is a beautiful place, so it has a transformative power. It's a great example of how far the idea of a festival has, has come. Walking around all day and I think it's time to unwind. And you know, if you are what you eat, I am about to be very high. I can really smell the weed on this. But it tastes good. So now you know you're, you're the first to experience lightning in a plate this year. So thank you for participating. When it comes down to it, people come to a music festival to give something to themselves, whether it's food or stimulation. Ultimately, it's about the connection that you make by taking something in. And by making that connection, you realize a deeper thing about yourself, whether it's a new lifestyle, a new eating habit, or new fashion sensibility. It's all about what you want for yourself. I mean, she came a Playboy. You can add hardcore kink to it. You can make it romantic. You can add elaborate costuming. It's very flexible kink category. And animal play is seen as a release for a lot of people because you don't have to think like a person when you're crawling around acting like a puppy. You just worry about puppy stuff. You don't think about anything stressful. You're just a pet.